Someone was out here alone. One melody is like me out here alone. I can't really live like this. They kept themselves company with music. They used the walls like I use my journal.
two voices is like me and my mom. We can survive, but eventually you need more. Three voices as complex as life is supposed to be. I could listen forever. Looks like they made it out of here. But what is this group? In the empty places, I found companionship in the tapes I recorded before leaving home. The elder told me the story of her life. I listened back to it, ready to note down anything that seemed important. Let's set the scene for the listener. Whoever that might be. This is the elder speaking. We're sitting in the plaza, saying goodbye to a dear soul. We're here to see if there's anything useful in my mind that could help you on your trip. A century's worth of memories, dreams, fantasies, visions. Like a big, old, haunted library. When I die, this library will burn down. Oh, which book should we check out first? I don't have all the answers, but I do feel the story of my life could help you understand what kind of world is out there. It's okay not to understand everything right away. The moment may pass before you've gotten a firm hold on it, but as long as you're there to witness it, to take it down in your journal, you and others to come will someday take the time to make sense of it all. Francis Kale, if you must know. You can call me Frank. Or Elder. Or the Elder. Or Elder Frank. You know, whatever. I don't care. I was born on the ocean. My mother and father worked on a cruise ship. The short-lived but glorious watery republics. Floating cities. Most won their independence by the time I was born. How can I describe them? They were a jewel of the golden season. Pleasure boats with a radical political program. How nice. The golden age was a time of flags, logos, mottos, mastheads. My mom taught me to read them. She was a ship's philosopher. My dad was a recycling engineer. 
Recycling on the ship was a matter of life and death. We had to get the most out of every object and watt of energy. My grandparents played with the past. They changed it like we change our wardrobe. So it was a different answer every time. But they often said we are exiles of some kind. Exiled royalty from a secret lineage. Blood that glows in the dark. Or we're exiled from the mouth of some great leviathan. When they were older, they just said, we're from here, we're from right now. I loved the way the ship would tilt and roll with the waves, especially as I fell asleep. It was so comforting. Picture me as a kid in bed, feeling the swaying of the ship. It was like being rocked to sleep as a baby. I loved exploring the ship too. Wandering through the suites, the swimming pool, the game rooms, and oh, there were two dance halls. A large, elegant one and another one in the basement. A lot of my firsts were down there. My first dance, my first kiss, and so forth. Our ship was taken over in the early days of the war. That was the end of the watery republics. I heard the dance hall in the basement became a weapons cache. It took me half my life to say goodbye to the world I knew in my youth. Imagine me and my parents and everyone I knew being escorted off the ship by a company of soldiers. And I'm thinking, I hope they don't make a mess of my room. I was embarrassed by the younger kids who were crying their eyes out. But they knew, I guess. Even as things got bad, I couldn't imagine the changes were permanent. It's easy now to look back and say, the internationalism of the golden season was violently breaking down. You can be naive about all kinds of things, but not war. Most of my life has been spent in isolated communities, and the one moment, the one moment I was in the wild world, you couldn't pick a more chaotic time. And we had been warned the season was going to end. Oh, but we didn't understand the warning. You see, one night, along a coastline, we saw beautiful lights shimmering above the water. Later, we found out this was an ancient warning system. It hadn't been used in so long. We didn't know what it meant. We just thought, well, ain't that pretty. We tried to stick together and camped out on the coast of the prismatic grounds. A kingdom of art and science. They got rich during the golden season. Everything that made them beloved before the wealth came, passionate, uncompromising, self-obsessed, made them unbearable once they had power. Artists make terrible kings. Are you sure you want me to keep going? The story gets darker from here on. Okay, so conditions in the camp were getting worse. My mom got lost in thought for long periods of time. She'd be completely still for hours, days even. We realized she caught, well, now we call it time misperception disorder. It's when you lose your ability to tell how much time is passing. A minute can feel like an hour. A day can pass in 10 seconds. What's so hard is the feeling of absolute loneliness. Normally, we're all at least roughly in the same flow of time. But with this disorder, you walk alone, truly. We heard about a traveling doctor who could cure these kinds of diseases. I decided to go find him. I found out his name was Dr. Fumio, and he traveled with his son, Lucio. People talked about him like he was a god. I described my mom's condition to Dr. Fumio. He said there was no cure yet, but there was a village high in the mountains. He thought it was high enough he'd have a better chance at treatment. Lower places are more dangerous. Valleys are the worst. He invited me to join them in going to the village. But I wanted to go back and get my parents and bring them with me. Yes, our Carroll village. People thought it had been destroyed, or was a myth. But Lucio had a vision which showed us how to get here. I packed my things and got ready to leave the next morning. That night, my mom came to me in a dream. 
She was standing in a field of flowers. Thank goodness as I last saw her. We were the same height. She pressed a finger hard into my palm. She taught me well. I knew the meaning of the gesture. I knew no matter what I did, I'd never see my parents again. In the morning, I told Dr. Fumio I would follow him to Carroll Village. The next few weeks were very physically tiring, hiking, climbing. And when we found the village, building, planting, cleaning, Fumio brought sick people from all over the world, and they got better. The treatments worked. Everyone was healing. So why couldn't I? One day, we got word the war was over. We never found out how it ended. It was like peace just swept over the earth in a split second. There was a party in the plaza to celebrate the end of the war, but I couldn't bring myself to go. Yes, it was over, but it had taken my home, my family. That night, as I was falling asleep, I felt the bed tilt and sway gently, as if it was being tossed on the waves of the ocean, as if I was back in my bedroom on a ship as if I was back in my mother's arms, being rocked gently to sleep. I knew I was finally home, and nothing could hurt me. I imagine coming upon a place as hidden and singular as my own village. Eventually, I found myself circling a valley, looking for a way in. This valley is asking people for a visit. I should oblige it. We never used this kind of technology in my village. Nobody trusted it.
Oh, one second. I'm not the first to do this. Just the first in a long time. Is that a strodo fop? Uh, what, what are they called? What is it? I love old gear like that. It's getting more and more rare. I, I had a camera, but it broke. Not that interesting of a story. I guess. What are you doing here? The whole thing, huh? You're young. You, you got time. What kind of stuff are you recording? That's the way to do it, if you ask me. If... Anyone ask me, I mean. The valley would be a good place to use those tools. Too bad it's closed down. Let me finish up here, huh? The elders said that people were exhausted by symbols after the war. But here are a few hanging. Hey. This was like a second home for a while. That was fun earlier when you showed up. And I was carrying the cardboard man. You were like, who are these guys? <laughs> I've... Been pretty bored here. You know, the valley's gonna be flooded soon. That's why nobody can go in there. The dam is falling apart. Couple of days from now. Day zero, we call it. Greyhounds. We're a community organization. We do all kinds of fun stuff. Health clinics, mine sweeping, daycare, evacuations, weddings. Uh, we're new. It was supposed to be because we're helpful yet neutral. We took a vote and decided to change the name, though. We want something more friendly sounding. I'm excited to find out what it will be. We're trying to get new things going, but it's hard. The past really has a tight grip on people. Doesn't feel like a fair fight. So we're trying to, well, anyway. It's funny, I stood guard here for a week and I've only seen greyhounds like myself and valley people on their way out. But now I see you and you're like a new element or something. I have never met anyone doing what you're doing. And uh, we Greyhands gotta support new things. So... Hmm. I'm not supposed to let anyone in. How can I? Jeez. I think you should go down into the valley and take a look. Gotta try something here. Dang it. I was trying to wink. Well, you get the idea. Go on and put that old gear to use. You can take my map of the valley too. I don't need it anymore. I'll be down to pick everyone up around midnight. See you then. I met a grey hand. He let me into the valley. 
I think he wanted me to record what the Greyhands were up to. And he gave me a map. The assembly point seemed like a good place to start. I wonder what he expects me to discover in the valley. It seems like I'll have to wait for night to enter the shrine. I'll think about what kind of visitor I want to be. I am probably the last person that will ever be welcomed here by this sign. I have wondered about the lives beneath unkept graves. The elder told me there's very little information about the years before 500. All above will remain, all below will wash away.
I wonder what the flowers have to say. If my big prayer is wrong, if it goes against divine will, please spare the people of this valley. We're so desperate for peace. Memory told over and over again. She must have been important to have such an elaborate, solitary tomb. These metal animals are looking up, expectantly. The people here are so weak. I heard gunshots last night. That was us. <laughs> what is that? Look at the pond. The water. What is that pattern? Should we run or something? Something frightening happened in this memory, but what was it?
There seems to be suspicion about the real condition of the dam and why it's being taken down. It's hard to imagine something new, a new way of living, but they're trying. The elder also said low places are dangerous. The city is high up like my village. Maybe it is safer. Gray hands seem to care what people think about them. Say they're going to build the next season. How? Imagine if the man I met is the only living Greyhand, and the rest are cardboard. Gray hands want to end this season. There must be a lot of people going to the city if they need to keep track of them with cards. There's a number to call for questions regarding the dam.
Oh, thank God someone is still down there. I've been trying to get a hold of someone for hours. Oh, thank you. I forgot the Day Zero materials. You know, the visual literature, the, the, the warm bath of ideas? I left it at the dig site. It should be sitting on a barrel with a fruit sticker on it. Oh, wait! Hold on. I forgot to do the secret password. I don't even know who you are. Is it too late now, you think? Okay. What day is the day after tomorrow? Whew, okay. I did figure you'd be... Sorry, I didn't recognize your voice. Hard to keep track of all the new recruits. What else was I gonna say? There was vandalism on a few of the posters. Bad stuff. I put them in the trash. Keep an eye out for more. Anyways, thanks for answering. The Day Zero material is in the dig site, pretty sure. It should be sitting on a barrel that has a fruit sticker on it. You know, I guess I was going to say you could bring it to me, but the flood will destroy it anyway. So actually, huh, I was worried for nothing. Everything is lost in a flood. God, we really know what we're doing. I'm excited for this all to be over. I'm excited for this all to begin. Bye-bye now. It sounds like they want to adapt their organization to the people in it, and not the other way around. Is that your name on your collar? Let's see, you are Madrigal. And you are Mata. And your name is Tupet. I wonder who named you that. You are a cow and you are named Krasnahorkai.
a beautiful cow named Gorp. The name of this cow is TVC15, oh my. And the seventh cow's name was Balto. from all over the world came here to compete in cow stuff? The golden season seems like such a different world. These people had to leave so much behind. Ooh, we got a big show today. Huge show. Breaking news. The Greyhands have died. We're being reborn, baby. And we're taking suggestions for our new name. Live on the air suggestions from the rank and file. You don't even need to be a gray hand to suggest a name. True, true. The number to call is 0019. That is 0019. First caller, hit us with a name. Uh, hi, yeah. I was thinking the bricklayers. Okay. Bricklayers. Laying some bricks. Hmm. Well, yeah, the... Uh, thanks for the suggestion. We'll be taking them all afternoon, so, so keep them coming. That number again is 0019. You're listening to Gray Hand Radio. We are broadcasting live from Gray Hand HQ. And we're going to take a little break. If the Gray Hands are changing their name, you'd know them as something else. The artist has depicted the Greyhands as a child. They don't have faith in their capabilities, but see them as innocent? Cow is called Frenzy.
another cow, another perfect name, Nelly. I've never drank cow's milk, let alone some kind of frozen version. This bell has a lot of character. Will the last voice to cry out in the wilderness not even be human? recognize you. Yeah. You're the famous doctor. That's your boy. The one with the visions. I'm right, aren't I? I won't tell nobody. We're just passing through. I have a niece. She... She hears things. Voices of the dead. I can't help you. Please, give it some thought. I can't treat anyone here in this valley. This is not a place to get well. Where is? I'm working on that. Take care. It's surreal to find a piece of Dr. Fumio's past so far away from Cairo.
Such a huge structure. I wish we had more information about the olden days. My mom told me a story about a special gateway. Passing through it took years off your life, trading time for distance. I suppose I'm doing the same, just very slowly, very gradually. I smell hay, rust, an old warmth. A symbol and a name. The Din. These stones must represent the three gods of the valley. Their names seem important. Din. 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 Like an echo from the past. Station. 